Hey guys, Dr. Cole here doing another short video for you and probably one of the most important videos you'll ever watch on my YouTube channel or website, however you're watching this right now, because today we're going to discuss a foundational concept in order to maximize your health or even in some cases if you've lost your health, the path to regaining it too. So on the screen here you see it says go upstream to the source. And you know, all too often in modern healthcare today, we treat our symptoms as if they're the real problem. Meaning if we look at some of the, the, some of the common things that seem like they're ever increasing in America right now, maybe you even have some of these symptoms here yourself, like chronic fatigue, brain fog, inability to lose weight despite diet and exercise, hormone imbalances, I mean diabetes, thyroid disorders, autoimmune disease, digestive problems, chronic pain, fibromyalgia, multiple chemical sensitivity disorders, neuropathy. I mean, we, we can go on and on with this list here right now. All too often, these symptoms are treated as the real problem. And so we go to our doctor, you, oftentimes we get put on a medication to suppress the symptoms, but it doesn't really lead to resolution or sometimes things get worse, more medications, and we really get on this cycle where we're never off of these things. And so what I want to encourage you today, and really, really inform you about, is that in order to heal your body, in order to address the symptoms, we have to go upstream to the underlying root cause of your problems. And when I talk about the symptoms here, you know, if, if you've ever seen your engine light come on your car before, not fun. But when that came on, you probably understood that the engine light itself was not your problem. It was what? It was telling you, it was indicating that there's a problem somewhere in your engine, somewhere, in the, somewhere under the hood, there's a problem going on with your car. If you took that, if you took your car to your mechanic and they said, don't worry, I can fix that, and they took some duct tape and just covered over the engine light, did they fix your problem? Of course not. The, the symptom may be gone and you can drive your car for a little longer, but every single mile you drive with it like that, you're getting closer and closer to the point where you're going to have a much bigger problem. And I hope you understand that's all too often what we do in this disease management mainstream healthcare system. We suppress symptoms so we don't have to deal with it. But if you're experiencing any of these things on the screen here right now, understand this is most likely not your real problem. It's the warning light telling you that you have a problem in your body. And so whenever we talk about going upstream to the source, today we're going to talk about our cellular health. So that's the first thing. It's, the, it's actually the underlying common link, the root cause of all chronic disease. And in another video, we're going to talk about going even further upstream and talking about our gut and our digestive health. So going upstream and addressing the real underlying root causes of why we're sick. Now, if we start here at our cellular health, you know, your cells group together to form tissues, tissues form the organs of your body, and all the organs of your body work together to form the systems of your body. So when we break it down to its most basic elements, you guys, we're only as healthy as the cells in our body. If your cells are sick, if they are inflamed, then it's impossible for you to remain healthy. And when enough cells begin to be inflamed and sick and, and not function well and toxic, when enough cells become compromised and function, your body's going to go back and start showing you some of the symptoms that we see on the screen here. So I hope that concept makes sense. When we talk about cellular health, we're going to break this down and uh, help you understand exactly what it means when we discuss cellular inflammation. So uh, you may have even heard that term before, cellular inflammation. Time Magazine was one of the first articles talking about this years ago where it said that there's a common link between heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, chronic fatigue, multiple chemical sensitivities, all those things we named, there's one common link, even though they're different conditions, there's an underlying root cause behind all of them, and it's a process known as cellular inflammation. And as we break this down, you're going to understand that this type of inflammation is not the same type of inflammation as if you're hand is cut and it gets red and inflamed. Or if you have arthritis in your shoulder and you can feel that and it hurts to move it. Cellular inflammation means that the cells of your body are toxic, sick, and dying. And if that process occurs long enough and enough cells become sick, you start expressing symptoms in your body. If we go here and we look at a healthy cell, you know, back to go, let's go back to high school biology, which may be a long time ago for some of you. Similar to how I was taught, we were taught that what, what is the most important part of your cell? We were told that the nucleus was, the DNA, the center, the, the, power, the, the nucleus of the cell is the most important part. Well, actually, epigenetic science is rewriting our understanding of cellular health 
and what's most important to how your cells function. And we're finding out that every cell in your body has a double layer of fat around it. It's called a phospholipid bilayer, two layers of healthy fat. And the reason why this protective membrane, this capsule, is so important is because your cells need things for them to function properly. Just like you need to eat a healthy diet and get the right nutrients in, well, your cells need water, oxygen, minerals, and nutrients to pass through this membrane into the cell. And then likewise, they need toxins, metabolic waste, carbon dioxide to be able to pass through the cell. So even for a cell to function properly, there will be waste products associated with that. And those waste products have to be able to leave through the cell membrane properly. Think about um, if you ever build a fire inside of your fireplace. You know, it gives you warmth, but you have to have a chimney to get that smoke out or else the smoke would fill into your house and you would die from breathing in that smoke. Same thing for our cells. Like good things go in, the cell functions the way it's supposed to, but the bad things, the toxins must leave through the cell membrane, membrane as well. That process of good things leaving through the membrane and toxins leaving through the membrane is called cellular fluidity. And in a normal cell, the good things moving in, the bad things going out through the membrane, it happens millions of times every single second for all the cells in your body. Additionally, on every single cell in your body, you have all these hair-like projections, these hormone and vitamin receptors where things will bind to to get their message into the cell. You see on the screen here, I put thyroid hormones. So if you have enough T3 hormone, that's not just good enough for you to have good digestion, good metabolism, lose weight easily, positive outlook on life, you know, all the benefits that come from thyroid hormone, but the, the hormone must bind to the receptor and get its message inside of the cell. Likewise, for diabetes and insulin to be able to tell the cell to open up and let some glucose in to take it out of the bloodstream, insulin must bind to the receptor site to get its message into the cell. So good things going in, bad things coming out, hormones and vitamins binding to these receptor sites. This is so important and it happens normally in a healthy cell, but is compromised in a sick cell. So let's talk about cellular inflammation. In an unhealthy cell, when I talk about inflammation, what that means is that this membrane has become toxified and inflamed. It's toxic and inflamed. The hormone receptors have become damaged and blunted. So what occurs when your cells are inflamed is if the receptors are blunted, the hormones cannot bind to the cell to get its message inside the cell. And if the membrane is inflamed, then the good things cannot get in, the bad things cannot get out, and disease begins to build and build and build inside of your cells. Now, if you imagine a healthy cell as a pond full of fish and wildlife, and you can fish there, you can swim there, you know, but every single day, there's a factory up the road dumping some garbage and some toxic waste inside of that pond. That's literally the process that begins to occur with the cells in our body. And if that process is going on, that, using that factory example with the pond, you know, the first day, as the garbage and the toxins are dumped into that pond, you might not notice a difference. Things still look the same. There's still wildlife there. You can still fish there. But you will probably agree with me that if every single day this process occurs, there will reach a point where that pond becomes so polluted, it can no longer support life. You guys, that's exactly what is happening to our bodies right now in America. We have so many things toxic-wise, dietary-wise, stress-wise, that contributes to the toxicity of our cells. That if the good cannot get in and the bad cannot leave, toxicity builds and builds and builds inside of your cells to the point where it reaches a point where the cellular function becomes altered, the DNA gets changed, and we start expressing symptoms. We, the, the, the genetics have been triggered and we start expressing the unwanted symptoms where now you have low energy all the time. You're not sleeping well at night. Your digestion's changed. You, can't lose weight the same way you once could before. The weight's coming on, you're not doing anything different. Chronic pain syndromes like fibromyalgia and multiple chem chemical sensitivities show up. And the answer is not to take medications to suppress those things. We have to go upstream to the underlying root source and remove, remove what's driving this inflammation and supply our cells with what they need to heal. Now knowing that, we should be asking ourselves, what are the sources of inflammation? If our cells are sick and this is causing our symptoms, what drives this inflammatory process from happening? Well, there's really three big things in our modern American lifestyle that we see that drive most inflammation in the cases that we work with. The first one here is sugar. The second one is bad fats. 
The third one is toxins. Now you see there's a commonality among these things. They're dietary related. That's why we're going to do in another video talking about gut health too because what you put in your body affects how your cells function. When we talk about sugars and the amount of sugars most Americans are eating today, I mean we're eating a hundred, they say over a hundred pounds of sugar per person per year in America from all the additives in our food today. It's the processed grains, it's the genetically modified foods. When we talk about our, our bad fats here right now, you know, if you're, if you're checking your nutrition labels and you see soybean oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, partially hydrogenated oils, those fats, they go into your system here, they, 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 uh, they congest the cellular membrane because the cellular membrane, we said, is made up of what? Two layers of fat. So these unhealthy fats come in here, they combine with this membrane, they congest the membrane and, and stop the good from going in and the bad from coming out. And some of the studies suggest that these bad fats remain in your system for months, two, three months at a time before your body is able to process them out. And how many of us are eating those things chronically, day in and day out, just leading to this inflammation? So we have to get off the sugar and the processed grains and the genetically modified grains. We have to get off the bad fats, and that does not mean I'm low fat. I'll do another video on, on the, the types of high fats that I like to get in my diet. God made healthy plant-based fats and, and healthy fats that actually help to heal the cellular inflammation. And then finally, we have toxins. And you know, toxins are, are a big, they can be a dietary source. We're all living in toxic environments in our homes today where many of us, what we're cooking with, what we're cleaning with, the cosmetics you may be using, and personal care products. If we talk about heavy metals in our water and in our teeth and see if some of the vaccinations were given to children. If we talk about uh, hidden infections in our home like mold or in our bodies like uh, root canals or infections in our tooth, things like Lyme disease and Epstein-Barr viruses. Uh, if we talk about glyphosate, probably a major source of toxin that, that most people aren't discussing that is sprayed on all of our crops and glyphosate is the active ingredient in Roundup. And so all of our GMO crops and commercially hybridized plants are sprayed with mass amounts of glyphosate where you know it makes you wonder do we really have gluten sensitivities today or do we have glyphosate toxicity and so when we go and we work we sit down with the patient and we look at what they're eating and we address some of these lifestyle issues that, that we may not be aware of that are contributing to our toxins this is ultimately the steps we have to take to eliminate these things and go far enough like we say upstream to the source heal the cells of your body if you heal the cells and we heal our gut, those downstream symptoms, your body will begin to heal itself. I always tell my patients, your doctor does not heal you. I do not heal you. Our job is to investigate, to go upstream and see what could be a source for driving the downstream symptoms that you're experiencing. If we remove those and we supply and support your body with what it needs to heal itself, your body absolutely has an amazing capacity to heal. So I hope this was helpful. Um, check us out on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Watch some of our other videos here. If you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button and visit, visit us on our website too at www.drzachcole.com. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in the next one.